This is a small case story of how a micro KP01 was used as a kill switch for video and audio. So this button, although it's labeled something else right here, but never mind, is muting audio on an ATEM switcher. When I push it, it mutes the audio, it turns uh, red, then I press it again, it turns green. When I press this one, it mutes the video and also the audio, and when I press it, it goes back to green again. So if we look at what the ATEM switcher that is connected um, with this controller does, um, let's first look at the software side. Well, oh, we can't because we have no access to it. Well, maybe, ah, uh, there, there we go. So as I press this one, we see how the master volume goes between infinity and zero, infinity and zero. And when I press this one, the same thing happens. Okay, so on the video side, what happens is we uh, see the downstream key. Let's just select something else for the media, uh, color bars. So whenever I press this one, it's going to turn on the downstream key here, and it's also setting the fill source. So I press, you see the fill source is set to media player two, and the key is on. When I press it again, it's turned off as well. So now let's look at the configuration used to achieve this. And it is actually quite complex, which is why it's a great case story. First of all, what you saw is that, um, no, actually, let's just take it from, from here. Let's first look at mute audio because that was the easy one. So naturally we see an action for audio volume for the master volume of an ATEM switcher. And since this is assigned to a button, the way it acts is by toggling on and off the audio by setting the volume to zero or infinity. Further, we also saw that the button colors were not regular white, dimmed and highlighted, but rather it was green whenever the audio was on and it was red when it was turned off. And also in the, in the off state, the, um, the red value was actually bright. So um, that's all achieved by a local color action. The more advanced configuration is the mute video. So this action has, in the top of the list, it has downstream Kia, Kia 1, toggle on off. Then as the next one, it has a system shift level, which are normally used when, when you have some kind of button press that turns on and off a given shift level. But in this case, we use a very, very special feature called return value. And what this does is it looks back on the binary output of this action. So if the downstream key is on, this one will set shift level to one. In case it is not one, if it's off, then it will be set back, but more about that later. So just for now, imagine that we come to the action here, we find that the downstream key is already on, then this action, the shift level, taking the return value in, will instantly set it to, uh, set the shift level to one. And that means we jump down to this point, and at this point, we see the same action repeated, because when we are at shift level one, we also want to toggle on and off the downstream key. We also want the shift level to be determined by the downstream key state by reading the return value because we need to be able to get back to this state. And then whatever else is involved actually just follows the logic of it because uh, you see an additional action that sets the downstream key fill to media player two. You also see how this one will turn off the volume while this one will turn on the volume. And then we have the local color that in, needs to be set in both cases, um, both in the regular case and in the shift level case. Otherwise, it wouldn't be red and green like you saw on the picture. Now, uh, the reason why it had to be this complex is because we wanted to achieve the maximum flexibility. Um, see, the thing is, and now we need to look at the controller as well. The thing is, whenever I enable the downstream key, the button on the controller reflects that state as well. And we know 
that this state it is reflecting. So when I press this one, it should now be in shift level one. And when I press it, it jumps back to shift level zero. And now it's at shift level one. And when we press here, it's now back at shift level zero. So it's very important to have the maximum flexibility that um, the controller will pick up the current state of the ATEM switcher by setting the shift level based on the return value from the ATEM switcher, which is why we did it like this. So what were the alternatives really to doing this kind of complex configuration? Well, let's say we started over from scratch. We might just think that, okay, let's select downstream Kia toggle, and then let's add a local color that would be red and green, office bright, then let's select audio volume and uh, if we keep it here it's probably going to toggle it on and off that would be mentioned in the manual okay uh, we need to select master of course now maybe this will do it at least we know that we have the same audio toggle on and off function down here as we have up here so um the problem with this is that we include two toggle functions. Whenever I press this one, I know that I'm toggling down trick here on and off. I also toggle audio volume on and off, but they might be out of sync. So what happens if actually I press this one first, so now audio is, is turned off, and then I press mute video, which will then mute the video, but then turn on the audio again, because it doesn't know that the audio was already turned off and that is one of the reasons why we could not really get away with this kind of simple configuration which would individually work but we need the downstream key and the audio to be synchronized so they always switch off at the same time and on at the same time and this is why we implemented the more advanced configuration using the shift state that will help us to uh, keep track of this so now instead of pressing save settings, I'll just uh, reload the configuration by clicking this link again, and we'll see um, the original configuration. Then you might ask, why do we really need to use the return value? Could we do it somehow differently? And well, the answer is yes. What if instead we said, okay, so we turn on the downstream key, we um, simply set the shift level to one, uh, that would immediately bring us into a case where we go to shift level one and then we could let this one turn off the downstream key and then use the, re um, the shift level here by setting it to zero again. So now these two actions would secure that uh, we go from here down to here and then back to here as we repeatedly press this button. So uh, would that be a great idea? Well, it would actually work. But the problem is that it does not really take the state of the ATEM switcher into account. So the more, um, the, the more, let's say, elegant solution is really to let the shift level depend on the state of the upstream key. Again, if the controller rebooted, the controller wouldn't know that the downstream key is already on. And so it would, on the first press, try to mute the video, although it was already muted. Uh, and that's one of the reasons for the more clever way of using shift levels here where we pick up the return value. Okay, so that was a quite complex configuration that shows how it is still possible to achieve this kind of um, um, interdependent uh, configuration of actions.